a lot of students often think you can't teach or learn how to do proof questions as they're all different. However, they do all use the same logic and the following logic can be applied with different algebraic proof questions. If we define n as an integer, so it's a whole number, then 2n is even. Why is it even? Well, if n is a whole number, 2n is just something in the two times table and we know anything in the two times table is even. So similarly, we could say 2n plus one is odd. Why can we say that? Well, if we know 2n is definitely even, then the number after it, one after it, will be odd. When it comes to solving proof questions, factorizing and expanding brackets can often help to identify rules. So please keep this in mind. We can use the odd and even properties outlined previously to prove or disprove rules or arguments. A good thing to remember is this little table. You can, of course, figure these out, but we know that, so if we do an addition, an even plus an even equals, well, let's think about it, four plus two, those are two even numbers, six, that gets you an even number. And that works for all even numbers. Next, an odd plus an odd. Well, if even plus an even gives you an even, you might be thinking an odd plus an odd gives you an odd. However, if you think of an example, five plus seven, that gives you 12, which is even. And that's true for all pairs of odd numbers. The reason being is you're effectively doing two n plus one plus, so n is an integer again, two m plus one. So I've used a different letter just so we can show these odd numbers are different. Then adding these together, well, we can't do a whole lot, but we could tidy it up a little bit. 2m plus 2n plus 2, which can be factorized. As I said previously, factorizing can be really powerful in proofs. To 2m plus n plus 1. Well, we know that's going to be an integer because you've got m as an integer plus n that's an integer plus 1 that is an integer. And then you times it by 2, so it's going to be in the 2 times table, therefore it's even. We can carry this list on, even plus odd, this will give you an odd. And of course, you could swap this round, so you could do odd plus even, that will still give you an odd. With multiplication, we can form a similar table. So even times by even will give you an even, a odd times by an odd will give you an odd. Again, you could think of examples of these. Just because you can find one example though doesn't necessarily mean it's true for all of them, but in these cases, it is true for all of them. So we could also do even times an odd, and this will give you an even. And again, you can swap that wrong round. You could do odd times even, and that will still give you an even. We can do an example of this. So if n is an odd number, so n, is odd, show that n plus 2 times n plus 5, so n plus 2 times n plus 5 is even. Okay, how can we do this? Well, I would start off by expanding out the brackets or see if you can tackle the brackets individually. So if we know that n is odd, n's odd, so n plus 2 well, that will find the next odd number, won't it? So say, for example, if n was 5, plus 2 is 7. That's the next odd number. So you know that this is also odd. If we add 5 to an odd number, regardless of what that odd number is, it will find an even number. Okay, because remember, we're doing an odd plus an odd, which we've previously said is even. So we know this is even. And then it just boils down to the fact that we're doing an odd times an even, two brackets next to each other will multiply them together. So odd times an even, which referring to this table, even times odd or odd times even, doesn't matter which way around, gives us an even. So this is always even. We could do another example. So Laura says that every prime number is also an odd number. Find a counter example to disprove Laura's statement. So we just need to find a prime number that is not odd. Well, going through our normal list of odd numbers, you would say like three, that's odd. 
7, that's odd. 19, that's odd. So we're not finding a lot of even prime numbers here. However, 2 is even. So Laura is wrong because we found an even number that is prime, so her statement is incorrect. If you found this video useful, why not try our topic exam on our learning platform? Here, you can answer a series of questions and get instant feedback on how you should have solved them, both in a written solution and video format. So you can see here a brief explanation of how to solve the problem. And if you're still not sure, you can watch the video where an expert will talk you through exactly how to solve the problem.